X58 in 2023. Welcome to part three. Now, today we're gonna do SLI, RAID 0, overclocking, and go over Windows 11 on this platform as well. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about X58 in 2023. Let's start with SLI. If you haven't seen part two, I highly recommend looking at it because in part two, we got NVMe booting natively on X58. So you definitely should check that out. But if you have seen part two or even part one, you may have noticed that my case is different. I went ahead and upgraded the case because we're gonna do triple SLI, so I wanted a case with much better airflow than the other one. And I kind of sold the other desktop. So this is actually has the EVG8 X58 for the Win3 motherboard now, but, and also the cooler is different. We'll take a look at those in a second here. But let's first get the GPUs. All right, so now we have not one, but two GTX 590s for quad SLI in this setup. All right, so it turns out that one of the 590s I bought are defective and it doesn't work. I tried repairing it by soldering on some capacitors and it still doesn't work. So luckily I got a refund for this and it's gonna become a art piece for me. All right, so remember in the beginning how I was gonna do 590 quad SLI? Well, I got 980 Ti's and we're gonna do triple SLI with these instead. I ended up selling the 590s and the other GPUs to fund these. So yeah, we're gonna do triple S fly. Let's see how it works out. All right, so here's the bio screen. Now the first thing you want to do when you do triple SLI is you wanna make sure you go here into the memory feature and you have to make sure here are the memory low gap. You have to make sure this is on 3G, it can't be on auto because my GPUs have six gigs of VRAM each, so these old systems aren't really good at addressing VRAM. As you can see, we have three 980 Ti's and triple SLI. And uh, we also got our EVGA super clock cooler to take things back in time with the Noctua cooler. All right, so we're playing right now. We're getting about 60 FPS. Um, one of the things is because I'm running a first generation Core i7 with three 980 Ti's, as you can see, the scaling isn't perfect. But even then, triple SLI was never uh, perfect. SLI is normally a lot better. You get a lot better uh, oh, getting shot at. As you can see, it's running in the 50s. I am getting at 4K, so as you can see, we can play games like this at 4K. Um, this is the highest setting, so obviously if I turn down the settings a bit, it'll look better. Or not, it won't look better, it'll perform better, because I'm getting around 60 with some dips. But yeah, as you can see, these are the metrics. We're not getting 100% scaling in this specific game. There are some games that can scale all three GPUs. We'll do a different SLI video on that later. All right, so next, I got a little package here with a couple of things. So let me show y'all. So I ordered five SSDs. These are Intel 320 SSDs, and we're gonna do a four-way RAID 0. Now, I don't know if actually the controller on X58 can handle four SSDs in a RAID 0. If it doesn't, we'll do three-way RAID 0. But yeah, 600 gigabytes each. These are basically 20 bucks each. So the NVMe drive from part two was removed because I have triple SLI now. So we don't have an NVMe drive no more. So we're gonna do the old fashioned way to get speed and that's to do a RAID 0. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is hook up my ESETA and we're gonna check each drive one by one and just make sure that they're not dying because if they are, then it's not gonna really be um, useful to me. So this is not the drive, this is my other drive. Here we go. It is a lot of hours. Power on accounts, not too bad. So 10 terabytes written and 2.5 red. Um, it still says 100% here, so that's good. So next, we're gonna check all those. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create a RAID volume. And we'll just call this volume RAID 0. Yes, oops, RAID 0, select disks. So we're gonna select four drives. Then we're gonna change this to 128, 2.4, and create volume. Yes, there we go. We are gonna see how fast this runs now. All right, so as you can see, the results aren't great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take one of the SSDs off of the computer and see how triple 
RAID 0 works out because it might just be the same speeds honestly. Alright, as you can see, the speeds for read are essentially the same and the write speeds are slightly slower but they're not that much slower so there definitely was a bottleneck here. So three drives is about the most you want in your RAID 0 for the X58 platform. All right, next, let's talk about overclocking. There's two ways to overclock X58 platforms, and it all depends on whether or not you have an unlocked CPU. So if you don't have an unlocked CPU, the way you would do it is increasing the bus speed. So you go to the BIOS and change the bus speed. However, the way we're gonna do it is we have a unlocked processor and that makes things a lot easier to overclock and things should be a little bit more stable in this way. So for people back in 2010, 11, 12, whenever you bought your Extreme Edition CPUs, people laughed at you for spending $1,000. But if you still have that CPU now, it's gonna be way easier to overclock for you. And we're gonna actually use throttle stop to overclock, which makes it even more easier. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is boot into the BIOS by smashing the delete key on my keyboard. As you can see, X58 takes quite a while to boot up. Mine's slow because it has 48 gigabytes of RAM, which was never officially supported. It's way more than what most systems have today. And then as you can see, 2022 NVMe BIOS mod. I am running the BIOS mod. All right, so the first thing we'll do is go into the frequency and voltage control. And because we have an extreme CPU, all we have to do is increase the clock ratio, which I have done here. As you can see, we're at 28. I already increased it. It was lower than that before. It was 20 something. Um, and then the next thing you need to do is your uncore frequency. You want to make sure that it's the ratio is right here. So two times for Bloomfield. We have Golf Town, so 1.5 times DRAM clock. So ours is 1600 megahertz. The memory does not run at 1600 megahertz, it runs at 1333. I think this is because I'm running 48 gigabytes of memory because I tried everything, I cannot get to 1600 megahertz. But the second thing you need to do once you have the ratio set up is the voltage. You want to change the CPU voltage right here. So I have mine set to 135. I recommend just going straight to 135. Don't even bother with anything below that. Just do 135 and then bring this ratio up a little bit. We're gonna do the rest in throttle stop because if anything crashes, it'll crash in Windows. If we crash, if our BIOS becomes unbootable, it's gonna be a problem for me because I'm running the memory gap at 3G. The default is auto. If it's set to auto, it doesn't boot and I have to remove both of my GPUs. So that's the reason I don't wanna increase this too much. I'd rather have Windows crash. So now we're going to go into Windows and overclock through Windows. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is you need to download and install Throttle Stop. So I already installed it here. That's how it looks. So the first thing you want to do is check all these boxes and make sure everything's still 100% here. Just copy my settings. And what we're going to do first is we're going to run TS Bench right here. Then we click Start. And as you can see, we're running at 3.7 gigahertz at 28 times multiplier. So basically, this is our increase from the BIOS. So we're at 1.35 volts. You should be able to easily run 3.7 at 1.35 volts. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click TPL and we're gonna increase the multipliers actually. And it looks like my screen is too big. It's not even gonna save probably. So we're gonna increase the multiplier to 30. Let me see if I click enter if that works. Oops, wrong button. No, it doesn't work. Okay, I can't hit apply because this is in the way. I'm just gonna reduce the settings a little bit to 250. That should be fine. You guys should still be able to see that pretty good, right? Okay, let's try this. Yeah, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 30. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna increase our, see we're at 3.98, essentially four gigahertz. And if this is stable, then which we sh I think it should be. I already tested this earlier. All right, as you can see, it passed. So next we'll do um, 31. And this is basically where my computer taps out at this voltage. I already tested this. As you can see, 4.112 gigahertz. That's a pretty decent overclock over stock. We do have six cores and they're not running too hot. Um, I am using an air cooler, so these temps are actually not that bad. I could do a repaste. But yeah, that's 31. So you're probably wondering, well, how do I know if it crashes or not? Well, one way is let's do 32. 
If I do 32, it's going to crash eventually here. Yep. So it crashed. I think the whole computer crashed. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, so throttle stop crashed. This is why I like overclocking through... Um, this is why I like overclocking using throttle stop. Because if it doesn't work out, it'll crash the program. Or BSOD. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this back. So this is my profile. Let's bring this back to 31. Let's bring everything back to 31. So what you can do is you can increase the single and dual core to 32. And then leave everything to 31. And then now we're going to test this again. And see, it might crash. Normally when you crash your computer, you should restart Windows. Um, this actually might work out. If it does, then the real test will be Cinebench. If this passes... Okay, so it passed. So now the real test is running a heavy program like Cinebench. If Cinebench passes, then you should be pretty good. Obviously, you want to run something for like at least 24 hours to see if it crashes or not. What I like to do is I like to find my highest overclock, and then I like to put it one multiplier lower, just because I like that. So, all right, let's see if this works. So I'm going to do multi-core because single core is going to take forever. Even multi-core is going to take forever. All right, so if this passes, then we should be pretty good. So let's see what score we get in Cinebench. All right, so as you can see, we got 4638. Now, I should have no problem beating this score later when I do benchmark section because we are running OBS. We have a bunch of programs on here running. That's not a problem. What we want to see is where we're scoring. So we're surpassing a quad-core Haswell CPU. We are surpassing an 11th generation quad-core laptop CPU. Ideally, we'd want to beat a 7700K. That would be really nice, but as you can see, that's going to require a lot more power. But yeah, so this is stable to me. So that's where our overclock is. Now, one thing to keep in mind is right now, you have to open up throttle stop every time you launch Windows. If you're happy with your overclock, so 31 times multiplier, what you can do is go back to the BIOS and set the number from 28 to 31, and then every time you boot, you won't need to worry about using this uh, program. So yeah, let's talk about some other things now. All right, so next, what we're gonna do is show you how to install Windows 11. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need to download Rufus. And basically with Rufus, I'm gonna open this program. And then what you're gonna do is select the ISO image here. So I'm gonna select from my desktop. I have Windows here. There we go. So now you're going to do here, it says UEFI. You're going to change this. So change the partition to MBR, and now it'll say BIOS. Next, what you're going to do is click Start. And then, as you can see here, it says remove requirement for 4 GB of RAM, secure boot, and TPM 2.0. This is all you need to check. Once you've checked this and click OK, your USB will now be able to be installable on an X58 platform or any platform that has these requirements. So you can install Windows 11 on any computer that supports Windows 10, basically. So you may have noticed when I was making the Windows 11 disk that this is running Windows 10. I actually installed Windows 10 on my X58 computer because I wanted Windows 10 on here. I do have Windows 11 on my Super Record 2, which is also based on the same generation of CPUs. So because I had Windows 11 already installed on here, I didn't install 11 on here. But, as you saw, that's how you do it. You just make the USB and install it the same way as 10. Everything will work the exact same way, basically. Alright, so... X58 can do most things that modern computers can do. Now, one of the nice things is there's no iGPU, so if you have a more modern GPU, you get all the newer features. Uh, video encoding and decoding-wise, of course. Now, there's one thing that you can't make up for, and that's AVX. You see, Sandy Bridge brought AVX and Haswell brought AVX2. And there are lots of games that are coming out recently that rely on AVX. So because of this, even programs actually, and because of this, you can't run those games or programs on this computer. There is an emulator online, but unfortunately it's so slow that it's not even worth bothering with. So I highly recommend to see what applications or games require AVX if you're thinking of upgrading your X58 platform. If you're thinking of building an X58 platform in 2023, we'll talk about that in a second here. 
But one thing, uh, another thing I want to address is the first thing everyone's going to say to me, why did you get three 980Ti's and triple S lag? Why not get a single 2080 or a single 3070 or something like that? Here's why. If you're an X58 owner and you have a 980Ti, two 980Ti's or a 780 or something like that, you can pick up a second card for very cheap and SLI them. Obviously SLI in 2023 is almost dead. I am gonna make a separate video on SLI after this using this system and my laptop that has a dual SLI and see how SLI scales in 2023. But yeah, SLI is kind of dead. So you can do that. I do recommend that you buy something like a 2080 Ti or a 3080, 3070. Before someone says, those aren't gonna work. I ran a 3090 in here. I ran a 3070 in here and I ran an RX 6800 in here. So I know for sure that those GPUs work. I don't know if 4000 series works. I have a 4070 in my other desktop. Maybe I should put it in this computer to see if it works. Well, th I'll think about that. But um, yeah, if if you're just looking for a new GPU for your X58 platform, you could buy a new GPU, stick it in, and it'll work perfectly fine. 3000 series at least works fine for me. I don't know about 4000 series. Now, obviously, if the game doesn't support AVX, then there's a problem. So the moral of the story is, get a single super fast GPU, don't buy multiple GPUs like me. The only reason I did this is because back in the X58 days, people had dual, triple, and quad GPUs. I wanted to make a system that kind of represented X58 during its peak days, and I even got the EVGA super clock cooler for the CPU, which is amazing, right? All right, so in conclusion, X58 was probably one of Intel's best platforms ever. Seriously. This thing has 48 gigabytes of RAM. It has a six core CPU, which originally came with four cores. We didn't get eight cores until Haswell E, and then we didn't get 10 cores until Broadwell E. We ran quad core on mainstream for almost 10 years, I think. So yeah, this was a really good platform. Even today, you can run a 3000 series GPU if you really wanted to. I did it for fun. And it does work, although you're going to see CPU ball in that unless you game at 4K. That's another thing. I have triple GPUs, which actually all get utilized because I'm gaming at 4K. If you're gaming at 1080 or anything else, you know, I wouldn't bother. Now, if you're thinking of buying an X58 platform or building one in 2023, I'm going to stop you there and say it's not worth it. You're much better off getting an Ivy Bridge X79 platform because at least you'll have AVX. Now, that's not to say if someone's giving you an X58 computer to just say no, or if you find one for like a hundred bucks, like a whole computer for a hundred bucks, you can still use it for other things. Like, I use this computer all the time. It's on my desk here. I use it actually more than my more powerful desktops because I use it for basic things. Web browsing, I actually use it for gaming um, every now and then because it can't game. It's just more convenient that I set up here. So, you can still use X58. I'm not saying it's not usable it's still definitely usable but what i will say is if you're gonna plan on building an older project like this look into the cost because this computer turned from a 79 dollars project to a much more expensive project i want to say the total cost of this whole computer with everything was at least 350 if not 400 dollars now obviously let's just say it's 400 dollars obviously that's not too bad because I have triple SSDs, I have triple GPUs, I have a 1200 watt, no, 12, 1300 watt power supply actually I think. And I have a case, you know, the case and the power supply can always be transferred to because they're modern. So, and also it has Windows 10 Professional of course, genuine license. Um, so for $400 all oh, that's not too bad, but at the same time you could build you can find a used computers for that price so just keep that in mind with that said if you're running x58 in 2023 let me know in the comments what you use it for what are your specs and any other suggestions because i don't plan to go to swear anything i bought a nice case because i'm gonna use it so yeah x58 intel you did a great job with this platform can we get a new one because x299 sapphire rapids i don't know with that said subscribe and i'll see you in the next one